we are really good in the United States right now at chasing disease, tracking disease, tracking symptoms, uh, medicating and, and covering up symptoms. We are really bad in the United States right now at building health. So when you say I'm worried about my health care, I'm worried about the costs associated with health care or my health insurance, all of those are wrong. You're actually worried about your disease insurance. You're worried about your disease discovery programs and the research that we do in the U.S. So tonight is about health care. And those of you that are patients in the clinic already know health comes from within you. We know the brain runs the human body. We know that the only way the brain talks to the body is down through the spinal cord, out the nerves, into every cell, every organ, every tissue of the body. And so we know when you get a cut, nobody has to be there for it to heal. It just heals automatically. Last year, you know, somebody you knew or, or you got the flu and it just heals automatically. You go home, you lay down, you rest, fluids, your body creates a fever. This is your body created the fever, not the flu. Your body creates a fever to heat up, bake the virus out. And then when, when the virus load goes down and you kill it, the fever goes down. So this is health. This is how the body works. So if, if we apply these principles to what's going on right now with the viral pandemic, there's a lot we can do that is not being taught about in, in public. We're being told, stay away from everybody and wear a mask. And it's totally fine to listen to that. What I'm here to talk to tonight is those of you that want to know, what do I need to do now to prepare my body for not if I get exposed to this virus, but when I get exposed to this virus? And what do I need to do to help my body naturally kill this thing off to the best of its ability when I get infected with this virus? So some of you are going to get a little annoyed, but the reality is you are going to fight this virus. I'll say it again. You're going to get this virus. There's no way around it unless you choose to stay home and never, ever leave your house again. And even people that have done that are getting diagnosed with this virus. So that leaves two options. You can either put your trust, your faith, and your health in someone else's hands, meaning trust that the governor is going to come up with something to do to make you healthy. Trust that you know, we're going to come up with an injection that can keep you healthy. Or you're going to take full responsibility for your own health and say, listen, I'm the only one that can create health in my life. And you're going to implement the plan I'm going to go through with you today. And, you know, ideally, some of you will do both. You're going to you're going to work the plan, get as healthy as you can and hope for an outside solution. Right. So I'm just sharing with you. This is what my wife and I have been doing. These are the things that we do in our household and will do if and when we get infected with this virus. And again, it's when it's not if. So. I'm not gonna talk about anything else medical on that. That's not my specialty. My whole job is teach you how to get healthy. So the path is you're responsible for your health. What are you gonna to do to stay healthy? So I have a couple of questions I'm gonna ask because this is what's being thrown around. Right now, you know somebody who has coronavirus. You know someone who has COVID-19. It's spreading like wildfire. Now that it's reached this critical mass, it's, it's going through the population. Now, the good news is, based on the numbers I get emailed from the state of Illinois, is the numbers of deaths are not increasing at the same rate as the cases. So we have a very high caseload, a lot of people that are fighting the virus, and thank God there's not that many people dying as it, as it was earlier. So why are some people getting sick and some people are not? Why is it that some people are getting sick and others are not? And so... This question was originally posed by B.D. Palmer, the guy that founded chiropractic. He says, why is it that two people working together at the same table, the same shop, the same bench, they're eating the same thing? Well, the difference was these two people, one of them had a disease and one of them didn't get it. Why is it that two people go to work or two people live in the same house? One of them gets COVID. They didn't even know. They're exposing their friends and family the whole time. And two other people in the house don't even get it. Why is it? that some people get sick and some people don't. Some people have tested positive with no symptoms, no symptoms, yet other people have died from this virus. So why is it, what's the difference between one person who does really well and one that gets really sick? And we're gonna talk about that today. The other question I have is, why is there such a large range of symptoms? Some people are getting really, really sick. Some people are getting a little bit sick. Some people get 
raging headaches. Some people lose their sense of smell. Some people are losing taste. Some people are having terrible fevers that last two, three weeks. Other people are having a fever for 24 hours. Why is there such a range in symptoms? Of if, if the virus is causing the disease pathway, if the virus is causing COVID-19, the disease, then why isn't it the same for every single person? What, what's the difference there? And why are we studying so much energy is going into studying the virus? We're looking at the little hairpin intermediate. We're looking at all the little aspects of the virus, the DNA particle. Why are we not studying the human being? So in science, the consistent the consistent item is the virus. The variable is the human being. You're the variable. Your health status is the variable. So why is it that some people get sick and some don't? It's because of their immune system. If you have a strong immune system, a virus can't live in a healthy body for very long. If you have a weak immune system, a virus can easily live in your body, begin proliferating and growing, and now you have a crisis on your hands. Why is it that there's such a range of symptoms? Because the symptoms are created by the person and not the virus. If coronavirus, if SARS-CoV-2 created the symptoms, it'd be the same for every single person that ever got it. But it's not because the human body, your immune system is what creates the symptoms. And then why are we studying the virus so much? Because the money being made in this, in this epidemic right now, the interest in all these companies is, coming up with a solution that they can sell for billions of dollars. If your health was the number one priority, there'd be information on the news about what we're going to talk about tonight. There'd be people explaining how your body works. There'd be people explaining, here's what to do. We'd have clinics handing out free vitamin D3 instead of handing out free test kits, right? So a test kit, and this is some of your experiences, you know people that have gotten a positive test. They go into the doctor, they're scared, they're nervous because they've heard all the all the hysteria, and what do they get told to do? Go home, self-quarantine, there is no treatment, there is nothing they can do. So there is no treatment, what's the point of even running the test in my opinion, right? It's to know whether or not you have this and, and maybe protect some other people around you from exposure, but the test is just saying, yep, your body has to fight this, go home, not here's what to do to fight it. So I digress, what I'm gonna teach you now is and this is one of my favorite quotes from B.J. Palmer. He says, if the germ theory of disease were correct, there'd be no one living to believe in it. And what that means is we know that germs exist. We know the virus is real. We know the bacteria is real. But we know that you are the variable. The human being is the variable. So let's work on you. Because if germs cause disease, we'd all be dead by now. So the immune system, and, and I don't, the beautiful thing is this, you don't even have to know how your immune system works. You need to know what your body needs to run a healthy immune system. So I'm not going to give you an immunology lesson. You can go take a class on that. But the main, the main thing is this, you're equipped with innate immunity. You have cells that gobble up virus and bacterial particles before there's any antibodies. You don't need antibodies to have an immune response. In fact, any new virus is killed by the innate inborn automatic immune system. That's what kills flu virus strains every year when they're new. That's what kills all these new viruses, innate immunity. So I'm gonna to talk to you about how to build innate immunity. We look at the stats right now. We look at the stats. Thank God, I say again, that most people are not going to be killed by this virus. Thank God. But the ones that are, we know there's a trend and it's called a comorbidity. It means you already have something wrong with you that's weakening your body, that makes it harder for your immune system to kill it. So obesity, heart conditions, right? So by naming these two already, that's half of America, if not more. Diabetes, add that in 75% of Americans, if you look at those three things. Weak immune system, I'm gonna go through some symptoms with that. High blood pressure, we're gonna talk about blood and congestion, how the body needs to be able to get to the virus to kill it. But if you have any of these conditions, you're in trouble. And if you have multiple versions of these conditions, you're really in trouble. And guess what? It's not just because of SARS-CoV-2, it's cancer, it's any other virus, any other viral pneumonia infection. You're walking on thin, you're skating on thin ice when you have these comorbidities because we know you're already sick. Your body is not functioning properly. So how could you expect to fight the virus at your maximum capacity if your body's already sick? 
So today I had, I had someone I adjusted and weeks ago, weeks ago, she fought coronavirus. They went in, ran the test. She fought it. She had a, a headache and a fever for 24 hours. Now this is a person who gets adjusted every week. Now, obviously she wasn't in the office for a long time because of the diagnosis. We had to keep her out. This is somebody who's working out at least three days a week. This is somebody whose supplement routine is very similar to mine. It's phenomenal. This is somebody who sleeps at night, who values their diet choices, right? This is somebody who talks to their husband and they fight about him getting healthy and, and, and he's not doing what she says. Now, the husband living in the same house, eight days, he had a high fever with the same virus. And then his mom, so her mother-in-law, same diagnosis, COVID-19, two over two weeks having this high virus fever, pulse ox was fluctuating, night sweats, coughing, terrible symptoms. And so I go back and I say to her, I say, so what do you think the difference is? What do you think the difference is? And she says, I've got a better immune system. And I said, yep. And, and the old quote is, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Meaning she's not lucky she had a 24 hour fever. She's healthy, so she had a 24 hour fever. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through all the things that she's been doing in her life. And that is called the five essentials meaning these five things are essential to having a properly functioning body, making sure it's working to its maximum potential. Number one, core chiropractic. We know the brain runs the body. We know the brain right now is doing thousands and thousands upon thousands of activities, running your heart, your lungs, your liver, your digestive system. It's changing your thyroid hormone levels. It's digesting the foods that you ate today. I mean, think about right now, all the things your body's doing while we're having this conversation, self-regulating, doing it on its own. So the number one thing you can do is get out of the way. Get out of the way. Interference removed. Take away the pressure. This is your wobble cushion. This is your regular adjustment schedule. Removing interference and scar tissue from the spine, which interferes with the brain feedback loops to the body. We know that if your brain can get from here to the body, activate the right cells, everything works better. We know that by getting adjusted, there, this has been proven against viruses. This was studied in HIV and AIDS. I actually did a case study on this when I was in chiropractic school with a patient in one of the clinics in Georgia I was working at, and he was a fully diagnosed HIV patient, not AIDS. The difference between HIV and AIDS is HIV means you have enough white blood cells to be okay. AIDS means now they're really low, it gets dangerous. What they did was, they found in the control group, so the people that didn't get adjusted, they had a decrease over the course of the study, 8%. Their immune system went down. They got worse. The people that got adjusted, mid-back only, no low back, no neck, and we know the neck's the most important for the immune system. Mid-back only adjustments raised their immune system 48%. Measurable on, on a blood test, their white blood cells went up 48%. So we know Removing interference allows the body to work right, raises the immune system. So if you're doing an awesome job with that, put a checkbox in there. Say, I'm going to keep doing my wobble to make sure I'm strong. I'm going to keep making my appointments. Me personally, I get adjusted once a week. I got adjusted twice this week, which some weeks I get adjusted twice a week, actually. But stay on your normal routine and your defense is always strong. Okay. If you, don't, if you don't know what your spine looks like on a scan or x-ray, you've never been adjusted, you're in trouble because I guarantee you, you have interference. The same way someone who doesn't know what a toothbrush is, they've definitely got some cavities and some plaque. So call the office or, or look up on the website. You can find clinics close to you if you're out of state. Number two is the foods you're bringing into your body change. Number one, the things that are available to your nervous system to heal you and what's in your blood. So we know the gut is 70% of your immune system. What you force your gut to process, the foods you eat, changes your immunity. So symptoms of bad gut issues, skin problems, rashes, acne, headaches, gassiness, bloating, fatigue, irritation around mealtimes or feeling like you need to eat. If you have any of these symptoms, you're in trouble. Your gut is damaged. There's weakness there. And of course, your body's not going to kill this virus as fast as possible. So I explain on here what you're going to do. You're going to eliminate sugar. 
Sugar is the number one way to destroy your immune system. We know that eating sugar will diminish immune function 75% for four to five hours. Most people don't even go four to five hours between meals. So if you eat a bagel for breakfast, you have a sandwich for lunch and some rice and meat for dinner, sugar, 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 there's not even four or five hours between that. You suppressed and maintained a low immune system the entire day. So no wonder your neighbor, your coworker, your sister, your cousin, your aunts, your nieces and nephews, they're having trouble fighting this virus because they're eating the wrong foods for immune function. What do you do instead? Healthy fats, tons of vegetables, and low sugar fruits. Now, I also have all this stuff written down for you guys. Actually, here is the Fearless Immunity Protocol. So there should be a pop-up on your screen or on your cell phone. And you can click there and download the protocol. All the stuff I have written out for you, it actually looks like this. This is the handout slide. So this is explaining everything that I'm going through right now. It's all written out for you. It's got the links to the workouts, food recommendations, breakfast and lunch, dinner examples, snacks. It's got my maintenance protocol for supplements. And then what I would do if I were forced to fight this thing, which I will probably be at some point, hopefully not symptomatically at least. And this is what I would do to get over it fast. And then I have my immune smoothie on there that we've been doing. So that that is over in the corner. You can just click on that and download it. And uh, I'll attach that to the replay as well. Um, there's also two, if you can't download it for whatever reason, this is the link. So there should be another pop-up on there that you can just click the link and that'll take you to the document as well. So as we come back here, so sugar. There's two versions of taking sugar out of your diet. There's the core plan. The core plan is for somebody who's already eating really well. You're, you're doing well. You're at close to your ideal body weight and you just want to stay the way you are. Remove inflammation. That's the core plan. You're going to eat no processed carbohydrates and sugars, but you can do sprouted grains like Ezekiel breads or, or sourdoughs, you know, as long as you're not resistant or have issues with that. You can eat more fruits. So someone on the core plan, especially in the summertime, oranges, berries for breakfast, apples, bananas, you know, you can do more fruit-based carbohydrates. And then you're also eating a, a more vast array. Again, the same thing, lots of veggies and lots of organic clean meats. So I have examples of that on the handout as well. The advanced plan is where most Americans are going to fall. This is somebody who's inflamed. You maybe have high blood pressure. You're overweight or obese. You're already taking a few medications for your thyroid. Maybe you're on blood pressure or cholesterol medications. These are all red flags. Your blood is inflamed. Your body's not working right. So you need to be adjusted. You need to clean up the diet and start pulling the stuff out and let the body heal. So the advanced plan is something you would do from 30 days minimum, upwards of 90 days to even, even longer until you achieve your goals. This gets rid of all carbohydrates even if it's brown rice or Ezekiel bread or sprouted grains, and you're not doing any high sugar fruits, bananas, mangoes, pineapples, watermelons, all you're doing is berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and uh, Granny Smith apples, low sugar, high antioxidant fruits. So that's, that's more of what I have written on the handout is the stricter version. Just know that if you're on the core plan, you can work fruit in, do it early in the mornings, and you can work in more grains just as long as you're moving enough to burn them off. So th those are your meal plans. Now we move into exercise. Everyone knows exercise is good for you, but not everybody knows that by exercising five days a week, moderate to high intensity, there's, there's a study that shows 40% overall sinus and upper respiratory infections in those test subjects. Meaning people over here, no exercise. People over here, five days a week, moderate to high intensity, 40% reduction in seasonal upper respiratory infections. These are viruses. So there's never been a study done on coronavirus, but I'll bet someday when we have the stats that the people who are working out and moving the right way, their bodies are going to be able to kill this virus faster than people who are out of shape, not doing anything the right way, of course, right? So some of you are already working out. Some of you need help with that. High intensity, I like high intensity for two reasons. Number one, we don't have a lot of time. Nobody wants to spend two hours in the gym. Number two is it's the best at lowering blood sugar. 
So sugar in the blood leads to calcification in a hardening process called advanced glycation end products. So the longer sugar's in the blood, the more sugar you're eating and the less you're working out, the more of these ages they're called. And they literally do just that. They age you. They make your skin wrinkly. They make your joints stiff and tight. They inflame and harden your arteries. So what you want to do is short duration, high intensity workouts. And, I, and what I've done is, number one, we have a link on our, on our Maximize Living website on planet-chiro.com for Max T3. Max T3, or you just go to maxt3.com. So Max T3 is, it's already done for you. I think right now it's $20 for lifetime. And you just flip open your computer, you hit play, and it does the workouts with you and for you from the comfort of your own home. And if you're really high level with it, you set up a little pull-up bar and maybe an exercise ball. You have everything you need or some weights. What I did during this pandemic lockdown is a lot of you didn't have gym equipment. It was sold out online. The gyms were closed, which they might be again now. So I made a no equipment, body weight only, basic, intermediate, advanced workout guide. And that's linked in that handout that I gave you guys right here where it says workouts, hit training, high intensity interval training. There's a link there that says click here for my examples of home workouts. There's two workout tracks. And I put on there the Tabata timer. Tabata was, was the creator, Dr. Tabata, of these on-off, on-off workouts. So you will get this workout done in 12 minutes. And I already picked the exercises for you. You literally have to just put on some shorts and a shirt you can sweat in, pull open the, the packet, hit print if you like that, open up Tabata timer, and every other day you're going to do these workouts at your house. Every other day. There's literally no excuse you have 12 minutes. There's not a single one of us, not a single one of you on this that doesn't have 12 minutes to work out a day. Not a single one. Minimizing toxins. This is huge. We have created, due to coronavirus, a massive fear that's taken over our country. And the solution has, has been presented to us that by coating everything in bleaches and sprays and alcohols, we can keep ourselves healthy. Now, it's common sense. You cannot toxify yourself to health. You would never get in a bathtub of bleach or a bathtub of ammonia and clean your body by doing that because we know it's going to destroy all the beneficial things and create toxicity in your body. So why would having it on every surface you touch, aerosolized in the air that you breathe everywhere, be a good thing? So my actual concern right now is I'm more worried about the toxins we're soaking our schools in the churches, the public, everything, the grocery stores, the carts. They want to hand me a cart that's dripping wet and all this nasty sprays and everything. I, I'll take a dirty cart and I'll just go home and wash my hands later. You understand? So my concern is you are becoming more toxic under the misconception that by spraying everything, you're going to get healthier and it's safer. Now, we already made this mistake as a culture with, with antibacterial antibiotics over the last 50 years. They used to believe that the gut needed to be sterile. You should have no bacteria in your bowels. Now we know what? The exact opposite. You have to have tons of bacteria in your bowels. In fact, you are more than 50% bacteria, meaning your human cells are here, double that, and that's the amount of bacteria is in you. Now, 10 times that, and that's the amount of viral particles in and on your body right now as you sit listening to me. So we're, we're marching in unknown territory here. If anybody in the world knew how to kill coronavirus, how to prevent it from infecting you, or what we could put in our bodies, meaning like an injection or a drug, this problem would already be solved. So I just want you to know, nobody knows how to protect you. However, your body knows how to protect you. There's a virus in the room right now that exists that no one's ever studied. We don't have a name for it. Your body has it on you, and it's killing it as you sit on this webinar. So you have to take a step back, unplug from all the hysteria, unplug from it, and realize you were made to survive in an environment with trillions of viruses. I'm not saying this virus isn't a big deal. I'm saying that you were made to kill it. Just get out of the way, okay? So minimizing toxins is something that you need to evaluate your household cleaners, you need to look inside your home and say, am I washing and cleaning myself too much, so much so that I'm killing my own microbiome? 
there's a time and a place where too much cleaning is bad and not enough is bad. So figure out what makes sense for you, but wiping every single thing with wipes for the rest of your life is not the solution. Antibacterial soaps is another huge danger to your microbiome, your immune system. Remember, 70% of your gut is your immune system. 70% of your immune system lives in your gut. That friendly bacteria is all over your skin and all over your gut. Whatever goes on the skin goes into the body. So just normal soap is what I would use. I'm not touching antibacterial. I'm not touching any of these sprays. We don't spray that stuff in my house. We clean with vinegar. We clean with probiotic spray. Actually, I'll write that in the comments if you guys can see this. Um, we use a spray called Counter Culture in my house. It's literally probiotic spray. And so we're putting healthy bacteria on the surfaces because we know when they colonize, the bad stuff can't. When you, it's, like a, it's like an apartment building, right? A vacant apartment building gets taken over and bad stuff happens in there. When you got an apartment building full of good people, good things happen. Um, the other thing you want to look at is your household cleaners. So check out the counterculture. We use that everywhere. They make an aerosol to freshen the air with as well, not a pump. Um, get that stuff out of your house. Now, stress. This is huge. The amount of people that I've spoken to in the last two weeks that are having legitimate meltdowns because they're afraid, they don't know what to do about Thanksgiving, they don't know what to do about Christmas, a coworker has COVID, they don't know what to do, they don't know if they've been exposed, they don't know if they're not. I agree, there's been some awkward and rule-changing setups laid out for us right now. So not a lot of people know what the rules are, and we're all trying to do our best to respect each other and treat each other with love and respect. And, and so you're going to have to kind of figure out in your work environment what that means for you. However, it all goes back to the number one way to reduce your stress is remember you were made to kill viruses. And then you look at what you're doing. If you're eating Cheetos and an ice cream sandwich for dinner tonight, you're sitting all day for work. You're never doing your spinal warmups. You're never getting adjusted. You're smoking. You're drinking too much. You're not sleeping enough. You're worried about everything, watching the news all night. You are perfectly set up to get infected by this virus. So all you do to eliminate your stress is you go down your checklist that I gave you here. You say, am I working out? Am I, am I doing the workouts? Yes. Okay. So I know my body's got good oxygen and clean blood, lower blood sugar. Am I eating the right foods most of the time? Yes. Check it off. You know you have the right nutrients. You know you have the right minerals. You know your body's getting the things it needs to fight this thing. So check it off. Take a breath. Am I getting adjusted regularly? Do I know what my spine and nervous system look like? Am I able to heal a cut fast? Am I able to heal a flu last year fast? Or am I the type of person that gets sick every winter multiple times? These are indicators. So you just look at your, what you're doing and, and you can calm down and you can realize that your, your body's capable. 55% of Americans say they undergo stress during the day. I'd say it's 100% now. The max T3 workouts are another way that have been shown Somebody doing high intensity interval training three days a week will decrease their mental emotional stress by 70%. And those that are doing low intensity yoga, stretching, walking, you're going to decrease your stress by 51, 51%. So that alone right there, physical fitness and doing wobble cushion, taking some deep breaths will solve your problem. Um, now I'm going to get into some specifics on supplements. People have lots of supplement questions. I can't answer them for you specifically as an individual, but I can give you some generic guidelines and some rules to follow, which is what I did on that handout. So for a maintenance adult, for a maintenance adult, meaning you're an overall healthy adult who's living these five essentials well every day in your life and you just need to stay healthy. Vitamin D3 is something you should be taking every day. Average adult needs 5,000 IUs per day. And the only way to know exactly how much you need is by running a blood test and your blood should be around 50 to 70 nanograms per deciliter. That's the ideal range. Uh, cancer research, immune research shows that. If you are deficient, I usually tell people that means your blood is 40 or 30 or worse, 20 or even 10 on a D3 test. You got to do a double dose, 10,000 IUs a day for at least a month. And then I would tell you to slow down to 5,000 a day. Um, RD3 also has probiotics in it, which is beneficial for absorption. And then again, building up the gut as well as insoluble fiber, long chain fiber, FOS, fruit oligosaccharides that your healthy bacteria eat in the gut. So it's immune promoting, 
gut building and healthy bacteria supporting. So just one of those a day for an adult. If you have kids, 10 pounds of weight equals 40 IUs per day. Sorry, 400. So I'm going to say that again, clean it up. 400 IU dose per 10 pounds of body weight. So if your kid weighs 100 pounds, you give them 4,000 IUs a day. If your kid weighs 20 pounds, then you give them 800 a day. So that's the sliding scale for kids. And then once the kids get up to about 120 pounds, you just give them the adult dose every day. If you have a kid that's around that two, 3,000 range, you can give them the adult one every other day because vitamin D stays in your system. Vitamin C, we know vitamin C helps shorten the duration and intensity of upper respiratory infections. Why? It's one of the most powerful antioxidants on the planet, and most of you are not getting enough of it. So no wonder you're afraid. So stop being afraid and become sufficient. Daily dose, I, do, I would recommend a minimum of 2,000 milligrams per day, 1,000 at a time. Vitamin C is water soluble. It's going to come out in your urine. So if you take a ton of it in the morning, it's going to come out pretty much the next time you urinate. And that's called expensive urine. So what you want to do is spread out your dosages. Right now, I'm personally taking 5,000 IUs a day. I'm doing a mix of the capsules, the vitamin C complete, and I'm doing a mix of the vitamin C powder that we have in the office. So I'm getting 5,000 milligrams per day. I do 1,000 in the morning. I drink one here at the office. I mix up 2,500 milligrams, and then I do another 1,000 or, or so when I get home at night. So you want to space it out. If you're fighting a virus actively, you can go as high as 10,000 milligrams a day. But I recommend that you titrate, which means to slowly build it up. So you do 5,000 for about a week, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. Then you get to 10,000 and stay at 10,000 for another week. And again, I wrote that in the protocol on here. Zinc, you know, you know, you know that there's something weird going on in our society and that we're motivated by money because zinc is so cheap, so easy to take. And we've got plenty of research on the forms and how to absorb it. We take, I, I do a zinc supreme is the one that I take. It's got all the cofactors for zinc usage and absorption. And it's in a chelated form. So it's easier to absorb because zinc is harder to absorb, but it's so cheap. It's literally, I think it's $8 a month to take zinc in the full amount you need per day. Yet nobody's talking about zinc on the news. Nobody's handing out zinc at the COVID testing sites. They should say, hey, you're worried about being positive. Zinc and vitamin D have been studied. We know that they affect your immune system positively. Get on them tonight. No one's saying that. So if you're not getting zinc, you need to get on the zinc. If you're taking the multivitamin from Max Living, you're getting enough zinc every day. You were doing better than you even thought you were. And so you need to be a little bit less stressed now because you're already doing good. Uh, if you're not on any zinc, or again, if you're fighting off a virus actively, you're going to want to raise the levels up a little bit so your body can use them. 30 milligrams a day is plenty. That's one pill of the Zinc Supreme. And uh, I put a link to that as well. That one is from Designs for Health, and they make phenomenal supplements. And they're owned by a family, and they're not a corporation, and they're, they're phenomenal. Um, now, there's some other herbs that, and again, these herbs have never been studied against COVID-19. Why? Because who owns enough elderberries that they want to sink $25 million into a massive study to prove that elderberry can help out with immune function? But we know, generally speaking, elderberry, echinacea, and a host of other herbs, astragalus being one of them, can help your body fight off viral infections and help your immune system work better. So... I take every day something called Immunitone Plus. And in that is echinacea, astragalus, elderberry, green tea extract. It's got lauric acid in there, which is monolaurin, which is why coconut oil is really good for you. It's got beta-1,3 glucan, which is from mushrooms. And these have been shown to help decrease allergy symptoms. They've been, they've been shown to help decrease upper respiratory symptoms. They've been shown in studies against cancer to help. Same with reishi and maitake, shiitake mushrooms, cordyceps. These are medicinal mushrooms that help the body. They're called immunomodulators. They can help increase an immune response when necessary. They can also decrease these massive cytokine responses in the body. So this is something that I take every day. 
because why not? Why would I not want to do everything I can to boost my immune system every day? Now, if I were to be fighting off this COVID infection, what I would personally do is I do the immunotone and they make a liquid one that's called Immunoberry Plus. One of them is in a capsule form, which is the Immunotone. And then Immunoberry Plus is the, uh, I'm sorry, Immunoberry Liquid is the liquid version of that. And it comes with a dropper. And then I wrote on the packet that I gave you guys is uh, you do a one dropper full, which is about a milliliter, three times a day. If you feel like you're expressing some health, expressing some symptoms and fighting this thing off. And that, that has similar ingredients. It's got the beta-1,3 glucan, beta-1,6. It's got the uh, shiitake and it's got the cordyceps mushrooms and, or no reishi in that one, reishi mushrooms in that one, as well as an elderberry liquid. So that's going to give you what you need. But these are, again, this is just up your defense, up your defense. Um, oh, here's what they all look like. So this is the basic daily. Most of you are already on D3, I hope. I'm like a broken record on D3. Um, actually, we had a study laid out here from Northwestern University in Chicago, not the hospital, the university, even though they're affiliated. And they did a retro. They looked back at data coming out of Europe and the U.S. back in March and April, and they found that the people who died, so hear me out, normal vitamin D3 levels decreased morbidity, I'm sorry, mortality, dying by 50%. That's what Northwestern University is saying. That's how powerful taking D3 is. Literally, if you have normal D3, they said, your odds of dying are cut in half from COVID. Wow. So taking D3. And we're going into winter, so you can't really sunbathe. But vitamin C, you guys are already doing. The Zinc Supreme, a lot of you are already on that as well. And then I have pictured over there on your left is the Immunitone Plus. And that's just a general herbal mix of immune protectant and immune stimulants. So you go back and you look at your checklist here and I'm going to run through this with you guys in the handout. So your workouts, best done in the morning, best done in the morning, 12 minutes. You're in control of your morning, own your morning, no excuses. If you want to get sick, don't do it. If you want to stay healthy, start working out. Sleep seven to nine hours a night. That's when your body heals. Everybody knows that you have to sleep to function and heal. Don't skimp on sleep right now. The diet I laid out here, I made it so easy. Eat this stuff, avoid these things, and then healthy fats, which is the main calorie source in your diet, should be about 60% of your calories are coming from fat. Fat does not make you fat, but that's a whole nother webinar. You got to look on the YouTube page for that. Meal examples too. So I laid out, these are some common things. Smoothie is the best thing you can do for breakfast. Eggs, Fried in coconut oil or avocado oil, amazing healthy fat, green juices, grainless granola. So if you see here, I wrote meal examples, click for more examples, click there. It'll take you to the Max Living Recipes website, 21 pages of recipes on there. And if that's not enough for you, or you need a little bit more guidance through the advanced plan or the core plan, you just, you go on the Max Living web store or here in the clinic and we have the Align Your Health book. That's the book behind me over here align your health. So this book has all the recipes in the back of it, as well as meal planning. So it literally goes through and says, you know, here's, here's the chart that says, go ahead, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Here's your snacks. That's your chart right there. So it, it lays it out for you if you need a little bit more guidance. And then for those of you that don't need as much guidance, it's all right there, my, my version of it. And then here's your supplements. So I have normal daily maintenance routine up at the top. That's one, two, three, and four. That's what you should be doing to stay healthy. And then what I take to recover from symptoms, again, symptoms are your body healing. So what do I do? Give it some more help. Doesn't need help, just no interference. And so vitamin D3, vitamin C, the Immunotone Plus, the zinc, and then the Immunoberry Liquid. And then at the bottom here, smoothies. So smoothies are the number one way to get broken down, fully assimilatable, easy to digest food into your body. It tastes good. You can hide healthy stuff that you don't like the taste of like spinach and kale and greens in there. And you can put a bunch of other things in there. So this smoothie is meant to be a complete meal replacement, complete meal replacement. You're going to do a handful of greens per adult drinking the smoothie. I typically do two. And if me and my wife, I do four and then I smash them down into the bottom of the blender so they don't take up as much room. 
Then I do frozen blueberries, frozen strawberries on top of that because they're out of season right now and they're pretty sour. Then we'll do some ginger. Ginger is great for the gut and ginger is good for the winter time. It's a good winter warmer and it changes that flavor on the smoothie. So you just skin it off, about a one inch chunk, throw it in the bottom of the blender. And then you're going to add either coconut milk, macadamia nut milk, almond milk, water, whatever you want. If, if the food comes up to here, you fill the water up to right about there. Just enough to cover it. Blend it until it's smooth, until it's completely how you like to drink it. Then you add your supplements. Then you add your supplements. When you're taking high quality supplements, you don't want to destroy them in the blender. You're literally buying a high quality protein that's non-denatured, non-heated. Don't denature it by yourself at your blender at home. Where, where uh, these cheap garbage proteins are already denatured at the processing facility, you're getting one that's not. So I add them after I blend everything. So one tablespoon of MCT oil, this is medium chain triglycerides. That's going to get you calories from fat. It's concentrated into the number one. It's called C8, and it goes straight in, and the body can use it for energy with very minimal metabolic breakdown, meaning you drink this stuff, and it's boom, rocket fuel. Your body's ready to use it. So I love it in the morning. Max Greens is a, is a dehydrated salad, medicinal mushrooms. It's got all the antioxidants from the fruits in there. It's got your wheat grass, barley grass, oat grass. These are all grasses, not the grains, but the grasses. People say, why are you tell me not to eat wheat and then give me wheat grass? It's the grass, not the grain. Um, we've also got medicinal mushrooms, enzymes, probiotic, prebiotic in the max greens. And then you're doing the grass-fed way to give your body cellular building blocks. That's an entire meal. So you make that smoothie. You can take the ginger out. You could add cinnamon. You could take and mix these up with different fruits. You know, you could do blueberries one day, strawberries the next, and change the flavor. But that's the best way to start your day. So as we end this, just remember, everyone around you is going to be in hysteria these next few weeks. These cases are ramping up rapidly. Pretty soon, everyone you know is going to have this virus. Everyone's going to be freaking out because they've heard the media scare them. So you can explain what we talked about today. Your body's made to heal. Here's what I'm doing to stay healthy. Here's what you can do to boost, or not even boost, to capture your immune potential. You're not going to boost it. You're going to just use it the right way. You send them this webinar link. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up on our YouTube page when I'm done with it. So anyone can watch this. It'll be free. It's up on YouTube. I just want people to be empowered and understand you were made to stay healthy. It's your lifestyle. It's these traumas. It's the buildup on your spine and nervous system. You're getting beat down into sickness and being told to wait for the government or some medical pharmacist to come up in a lab with something that's going to make you healthy. That doesn't make sense. We know that they don't have your best interest. We know that Blue Cross isn't going to come and make sure your family's healthy. They're there for crisis. We know that, that, that people want to sell drugs to you. Come on. If the drugs did something healthy and fixed it, you'd take it once and be done. But they're just covering, covering, covering. I'm not saying there's never a time where they can help somebody. I'm saying that you have a choice to make whether or not to rely on an industry that's going to sell you pills and potions or take full responsibility for your health, do what works, and do what's allowed humans to survive through viral outbreaks for millennia and get to work. And so don't let these people get in your head, you guys. Don't let them get to you. You have to be the leader in your community. You have to be the leader in your family. You have to be the one that steps up and changes your dinner recipe tomorrow night and not let your family eat garbage. You got to be the one that shows your kids and teaches your kids. We're wearing a mask because everyone said so and everyone's a little nervous right now, but your body is made to kill viruses and you have to teach this next generation because that's my, that's my number one concern right now is the minds the minds of everybody. And this is a very unique group of people who take responsibility for your health, but you're surrounded by everyone around you that's that's pulling at you and can sometimes get through into your mindset and make you worried about what you're doing and say, man, is what I'm doing working? Of course it is. It's the only thing that makes sense. It's the only thing that makes sense. And if there was a solution, it would have already been implemented and we wouldn't be talking about this anymore. But here we are, eight, nine months into this thing, the same as we were back in April, the same lockdown, the same exact thing over and over. And it's never going to stop until we decide as a community and say, listen, let's take care of our families and our neighbors, teach them how to get healthy. 
Let's take care of the people we know that are injured and immunocompromised and do everything we can to get them healthy, make them a smoothie for breakfast, get them up and move around and, and let them not fall down and get hurt, but get them up and move them around. They need that interpersonal connection. But you guys are the leaders. You guys know more than everyone else around. So I hate to say it, but that means there's a layer and a level of responsibility that comes with it. And, and I hope this equips you enough to lead the people around you that, that are getting freaked out and nervous and scared during this as we ramp up into, into the second wave that was predicted, you know, six, seven, eight months ago. So um, any questions, shoot me some emails. Um, my YouTube is just my name. I'll type it. It's just Dr. It's Dr. Daniel Moynihan, M-O-Y-N-I-H-A-N. And it's just, you just search on, on uh, YouTube and uh, it'll just be my face on there. So shoot me any questions though. And I would love to hear, you know, who's starting these protocols. The only other thing I forgot to mention is Designs for Health was cool enough. They give me my own discount code. So if you're going to order from them, type in DRDAN10 and you save 10% off your whole order, which is nice of them. Because I, I asked them the other day and I said, listen, do you guys make me like a discount code or something? People are ordering and, and getting all this stuff and just make me a discount code. So there it is. Dr. Dan 10, save you 10% off your whole order. Um, that's only, I wrote it on the ones that are that are from that company. That doesn't apply to the maximized living ones. Those prices are already super low. We use our whole network. We mass, we make tons of those and distribute them out. So the prices are, we actually dropped them two years ago, which nobody does on their supplements. So anyways, those links will take you there. And don't forget to use that coupon code. 